pleasure There's nothing like it in this world There's nothing greater It's all I'll ever need and more I found a treasure Endless joy and perfect peace Sent down from heaven made alive inside of me God is good and he's good to me he's all I want and he's all I need so I
Hey boys and girls, uh, Mr. Jeff here. I uh, hope you're having a great week. I'm excited to come to you through the camera, through the computer, and I can't wait to talk to you about Jesus today. But as we get started, I've got a fun, fun question for you, all right? Would you rather, would you rather be a little rhino or a giant hamster? Little rhino, giant hamster. Okay, okay. Uh, here's another one for you. Would you rather be able to fly or be invisible? Would you rather be able to fly or be invisible? And one last one, this is a gross one, but this is a fun one too. Would you rather lick a dirty trash can or lick a bathroom floor? Ooh, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. Which would you rather do? I don't, it's, there's not good options either way. Sometimes they're both good. I don't know. Anyway, so as we come to our story today, uh, we're going to be talking about something that represents, reminds us of, and makes us think of Jesus. Something that represents and reminds us of and think of Jesus. Any idea what that means? Any idea what it might be? Any idea what it might be? I'll give you a clue. It's right in front of me. All right, watch the video and we'll chat about it in a second. Jesus and his disciples were in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Long ago, God delivered his people from slavery in Egypt. He sent 10 plagues to Egypt. And during the 10th plague, the firstborn of the Egyptians died. The Israelites smeared the blood of a lamb on their doorpost and God kept them safe. He passed over their houses. God said that once a year, the Israelites should celebrate the Passover to remember how he rescued them. He told his people when and how to celebrate. On the day when the Jewish people were supposed to kill the Passover lamb, Jesus sent Peter and John to get the meal ready. He said, go into the city and you will meet a man carrying a jug of water. Follow him. Jesus said that the man would go to a house and the homeowner would show Peter and John a large room upstairs with furniture in it. That was the place Jesus wanted them to get the Passover meal ready. So Peter and John did as Jesus said. When the Passover meal was ready, Jesus and his disciples reclined to eat. Jesus said, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples were upset, but Jesus knew this was part of God's plan. Peter said he would never betray Jesus, but Jesus said Peter would deny him three times. Then Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God for it, broke it, and then gave it to his disciples to eat. Jesus said, this is my body, which I am giving for you. Do this to remember me. Jesus took the cup and gave it to his disciples. They drank from it. And Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. They sang a hymn together, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus knew he would be arrested and would suffer. Then he would die on the cross to take the punishment for the sins of the world. On the third day, Jesus would rise from the dead. The New Covenant says that everyone who turns away from sin and trusts in Jesus' death and resurrection will be forgiven of his sins and will have eternal life. Hey, boys and girls, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, now, in the video, they talked about bread and they talked about wine, juice, whatever you want to call it, and the bread. Do you remember what the bread is supposed to represent? Yeah, bread represents Jesus' body. Jesus' body that's going to be, that was going to be sacrificed on the cross at this point. See, at this point, Jesus hadn't died yet. And they were telling him after he dies to remember him by uh, taking the, the bread as his body. And so he also talked about wine. And he said, remember him through the wine that this washed away all the bad things you've done. And to remember his blood that he shed for each and every one of us. Uh, because the Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness. 
There can be no forgiveness. And so uh, we call this, when we take part in this, uh, eating of the bread and drinking of the cup together and uh, reading of the Bible, we call that communion, communion. And so uh, we do this in our church once a month at least. Uh, we do it the second Sunday of the month in our big adult worship service. And we gather together and uh, the adults take communion together and reflect on what Jesus did for them. Now, let me encourage you. You could totally do this. You could ask your parents, hey, can I go to the service one Sunday and take communion? And they'd love to do it. You can also ask your parents if you can do communion at home. Uh, the Bible doesn't say you have to do communion at church. You can do it anywhere. You can do it anywhere. So remember that. So why should we remember what Jesus did for us? It helps us remember who we are. It helps us remember who we are. When you believe in Jesus, you are a child of God that is forgiven and God will always love you no matter what. And you have a home in heaven when you die. There's so many things to that. But that's why we remember what Jesus did for us. To remember that we're a child of God. I hope you have a great week and we'll chat with you soon. Hey parents, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We did talk about communion today and uh, the Last Supper and how that all came to be. Uh, you're welcome to walk back through the lesson and see that. Uh, but here's a few questions you can ask your kids. This is a perfect opportunity to share the gospel with them. Take this bread and talk about how they've done bad things uh, and how this bread reminds them of Jesus um, and how this uh, wine, what the Bible says, but uh, juice, whatever you want to say, this red stuff reminds them of Jesus' blood. And Jesus died on the cross for all the bad things they've done. And his blood wiped away their sins, washed away their sins. If they believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, that's all it is. And it's a perfect opportunity to talk about that. It's a perfect opportunity to also think through and talk about with the kids. How often do we remember what Jesus does for us? What are some ways that we can remember as a family? And so write down some ideas. And do, It could be weekly. It could be monthly. It could be daily. Whatever you want to do. Um, just look for opportunities to practice this. And this is not just something, parents, that you can do at church. This is something you can do at home with your own family. You are qualified to do it if you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. And I encourage you to take communion as a family periodically. Uh, it's a very amazing moment. And we do it every year at the family camp out. And it's just, it's very simple, very sweet, not very long. And it just helps us remember what Jesus did and helps model for our kids how important Jesus is. Uh, if you have any questions or if I can help you out at all, feel free to shoot me an email, jhunt at hcbcpf.com, or shoot me a text at 214-546-5309. Thanks, parents.